to the really brave, uh, uh, to the really brave last, uh, the most resistant participant to this, uh, to this conference. I, uh, I hope there are, I don't know the online participants, but there are online participants. So we have the, a session of two online talks. The first one is from Kadijal, uh, I'm going to try, Elanuz, I don't know if it's fine, <laughs> uh, who is connecting from the southern part of the Mediterranean, I think from Morocco, right? So um, I think uh, the, uh, she's going to tell us about uh, uh, an issue that we have been debating, so different indicators for Markoven and Markoven dynamics. So Khadija, please, Thank you can you. start. Well, thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Khadija Lanouz, and I am from Al-Malk Sadi University, Morocco. So I would like, first of all, I would like to thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, discuss with you our work. So this work uh, entitled Different Indicators for Markovian and Non-Markovian Dynamics. Mm -hmm. So the outline of my presentation is given us. First, I would like to explain the main motivation behind this work. After that, I will give you some preliminaries necessary to describe our model. And of course, I will, of course, I will finish by a short uh, conclusion. So as we know, today's society is often dubbed to communication society because of the importance of mass media and communication in our lives. Indeed, we can catch information from any, on any topic from anywhere via our computers or even via our smartphones. So the most popular questions arise in the last two decades is, are what are what is information itself and second one if we have a random variable x that queried about a probability distribution p so how much information one can learn from c and x of course the answer to these questions is given to us by information theory introduced by claude channel at 1940. so if we look for an exact definition of information we merely agree that it is a quantity expressed in bytes and as i said the authorship is attributed the to Claude Shannon at 1940, but along before him, Roland Aylmer Fisher treated the notion of information in his paper at 1922, and he said that it is a way of measuring the amount of information via estimating a parameter of the distribution that models except. And after 20 years, of course, Claude Shannon came with his famous formula, uh, Shannon entropy, and he said that it, in, it is intuitively defines the rate of information, uh, delivered information source as an electrical signal or even for a seat of bytes. However, in the early of 1980, so a group of researchers interested in information theory pondered the following scenario. So if the technological progress being made on the miniaturization of the device, uh, devices used to transmit and process information were to continue, then, in the near future, we would be able to store information at the atomic, particle, and microscopic scale. So, in this case, quantum scenario for transmission and processing information were to continue and, of course, lead to what we call quantum information theory, as you know. So, one of the important uh, concepts in quantum information theory is open quantum systems. But let me start with, with a very brief uh, uh, definition of closed system. So as we know, a closed system is a system that does not interchange information, which is matter or energy, with other external systems. So of course, the first quantum method describing the dynamics of closed quantum, quantum system is given by Schrodinger equation. Uh, uh, but this is all, not always the case. In general case, any quantum system can interchange information with other systems and this gives a rise to open quantum systems where in general uh, this system open quantum system is connected or uh, is in interaction with its environment so now if we assume that the coupling between the system and its environment is weak and the environment is memoryless then in this case the dynamics is said to be markovian if not, if the memory effects between the open quantum system and its environments are always taken into account, then in this case, uh, the dynamics is uh, non-Markovian. And of course, uh, the reduced density operator for the open quantum system uh, can be evolved in time using, for example, the Lindblad master equation. So another concept known in quantum information theory is what we call quantum speed limit time. 
So it is originally known as the minimum evolution time uh, between two distinguishable states, and it is given by the maximum between three different quantities, which are given by this formula, where in general, uh, the second key norm is defined as this uh, formula, where lambda 1 to lambda n are the singular values of this uh, operator. So in particular, where t is equal to 1, I mean, we are in this situation, then this norm is simply the truth plus norm. If t is equal to 2, then the, this norm defines the Hilbert-Schmidt norm, and if t, if we are in this situation, then the, this norm defines simply the so-called operator norm. However, this quantity describes the uh, birth angle between the initial state and its uh, target. So another concept widely used in quantum information theory and quantum estimation theory is what we call quantum information theory. And it is defined uh, and it is used to uh, detect the precision of a parameter via, estim uh, via estimating some parameters encoded in a quantum state. So why we use quantum feature information? Because in general, uh, in most, uh, in general, and in quantum information theory, it isn't always possible to quantify directly the parameters encoded in a quantum state. So for this reason, quantum feature information gives a way to solve this problem via estimating some parameters encoded in a quantum state. So it is formally based on the symmetric logarithmic derivative operator, and it is given by this formula, where epsilon is the parameter to be estimated, Rho epsilon is the state, and L epsilon is the symmetric logarithmic derivative operator, which satisfies this uh, relation. So now, if one make, uh, if one can make the spectral decomposition for the density operator rho epsilon, then the quantum Fisher information can be rewritten as this form, where lambda e and psi e are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of uh, this uh, state. And of course, we can also defines the quantum feature information for any single QB system. And as we know, the density operator for any single QB system can be uh, defined in terms of its Bloch vector and Pauli matrices. Then the quantum feature information for any single QB system is defined as this uh, form. So based, as, uh, based on this, we mainly focus our attention to uh, investigate the relation to make a comparative study between quantum speed limit time and quantum feature information for uh, actually for three different open quantum systems, but I will present just two quantum uh, open quantum systems uh, uh, to examine the, the, the Markovianity and or the no Markovianity of uh, dynamics of this uh, system. So let me start with the first uh, uh, proposed model. So uh, this model reflects the interaction between a single particle with a set of uh, particles. So this is the open quantum system and the rest of the particle represent the environment. Uh, of course, the open quantum system is uh, described by the, this master equation, equation where each, each one is the Hamiltonian, the self-Hamiltonian of the atom, which is given by this formula. And the uh, C capital here denotes, uh, denotes the decoherence uh, rate. So after some straightforward calculations, and for any t greater than zero, the reduced density operator of the first open quantum system is given by this formula, where d is the decoherence function, and it is given by this formula. As you see here, it depends basically on the time parameter t. It depends on the decoherence rate, and also it depends on this quantity, which represents the difference between the central part, the distance between the central particle and the other particle. So the second model is based on the interaction between a single qubit system with a non Newtonian Lorentzian cavity. So of course, the interaction between these two systems is governed by jeans kamins model and in rotating wave approximation, the total Hamiltonian is given as the sum between the self-Hamiltonian of the atom plus the self-Hamiltonian of the electromagnetic field plus the interaction Hamiltonian between these two subsystems. So uh, again, uh, after some straightforward calculations, uh, and for any t greater than zero, the reduced density operator of the second open quantum system is given by this formula, where uh, gamma denotes uh, 
the, the Coupe coherence function, and it can be found in the Laplace transform, the inverse of Laplace transform, the Lorentzian distribution, and so on, so forth. So as a result, we have here some analytical results. We have calculated the quantum speed limit time for both open quantum systems. So for example, for the first open quantum system, we have uh, calculated the quantum speed limit time for, uh, between the initial stage, which is supposed as this form, and its target, which is given, and its target, and then we have calculated the quantum speed limit time. Again, we have also calculated the quantum speed limit time for the second open quantum system of the initial stage, which is given by this formula and its target, and we have uh, this formula. So as you see here, both quantities depend basically on the decoherence function for each open quantum system. We have also calculated the amount of quantum fissure information, and again, it is clear that both quantities also depends on the decoherence function of each system. So here we have some plots. We have calculated, uh, so let me start with the first model. So we have plotted the amount of quantum speed limit time and quantum fissure information. Again, it's uh, the, the parameter delta x. So I remember that delta x is the difference between the center particle and the other particle. So we can have some negative equations, of course. So um, we have for, uh, for for the first figure here, we have plotted the amount of quantum speed limit time. So a remarkable transition from non-speed up phenomenon to speed up phenomenon is clearly appeared. So in the first region, it is clear that the quantum speed limit time increases gradually uh, to reach the minimum value for delta x uh, equal to zero, and then it uh, increases to reach the maximum value for the particular values of delta x. Uh, in, the, in the plot of quantum fissure information in the first region, it is clear that the amount of quantum fissure information increases gradually to reach the maximum bound and then decreases fast to uh, completely vanishes at delta x equal to zero, and then we have a symmetric uh, behavior in the second region. And in general, it is clear that for both quantities, quantum speed limit time and quantum fissure information, these two quantities increases as the risk use time also increases. So how can we interpret this phenomenon? Phenomena? So in the first region, when quantum speed limit time increases and quantum fissure information uh, decreases and quantum fissure information increases and then decreases, we have interpreted this as so the, uh, the open quantum system provides the uh, system provides the maximum uh, the, the information to its environment. So at this critical point, namely the, namely delta x equal to zero, the open quantum system provides the maximum of information to its environment. However, in the second region, when the open when the quantum speed limit time increases and quantum fissure information increases too, then we have uh, interpreted this that that uh, there is a feedback of information from the environment to its uh, system, which means that uh, the open quantum system becomes uh, coupled to, strongly coupled to its environment, uh, which may accelerate the speed of uh, the system. So since we have this exchange of information between the open quantum system and its environment, uh, then in this case, the dynamics is said to be non-Markovian, which is not the case for the second model, namely a single qubit interacts with a non-Newtonian Lorentzian cavity. So similarly here, we have plotted the amount of quantum speed limit time and quantum fissure information. But now again, it's a coupling with parameter. So it is clear that uh, the quantum speed limit time behaves linearly uh, and the speed up phenomenon doesn't occur, which means that the only the open quantum system gives the information to its environment and there is no feedback of information from the environment to its system, which can be also seen from the behavior of quantum fissure information, where, as you see here in this point, uh, the amount of quantum fissure information is completely vanishes, which means that the open system keeps its uh, uh, local information. So whereas for the remaining values, it is clear that the amount of quantum fissure information increases linearly, which means again that the only the open system provides the uh, information and there is no feedback of uh, information to 
d qubit, which means that the dynamics is Markovian. So as a summary, in the first uh, model, uh, it is shown that uh, the quantum speed limit time and quantum fissure information fluctuate similarly between the, their maximum and minimum bounds. Uh, we have concluded that the information is transmitted from the open quantum system to its environment and feeds back again to the system. Whereas for the non detuning Lorentzian cavity, the quantum speed, velocity, velocity limit time, and quantum fissure information are always linear, which means that the information flow trend is irreversible. I mean that the information cannot feed back through this qubit. And then we have concluded that quantum speed limit time and quantum fissure information can be considered as a good indicators for Markovian or and non Markovian. So I have not enough time to show you all the results. We have also uh, added a third quantum uh, open quantum system in order to check our results. And we have also plotted the normal covianity measurement in order to uh, uh, prove our results. And I think we have uh, uh, got uh, uh, an interesting result. So if you are interested, you can check our paper. And uh, finally, I would like to thank my collaborators, my previous uh, supervisor, Professor Abraham Lalatri, uh, from Al-Maghdadi University, Morocco, and also my collaborator, Professor Nasser Mishwali from Al-Bahrain University. And uh, finally, thank you very much for your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk and for being perfectly in time. Are there questions from the audience? Yes, okay. Hi, thank you very much for a nice talk. My, uh, I wanted to ask, like, what kind of, if you could go back to the definition of for the quantum speed limit time, like I wanted to ask you just uh, if you, can you clarify like what kind of um, formula you are using for the speed limit time? Because I know, so for example, like the 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 one that I know is like the the speed limit time for unitary uh, dynamics for closed system. Then there are generalization for um, Lindbladian uh, kind of evolutions. Yeah. But I guess in this case you 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 are using um, an even more general speed limit time, because it has to be valid also yeah. for non-Markovian ones. So if you could uh, clarify this. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Uh, I, uh, quantum speed limit time, first, is defined for closed quantum system using the Mandelstam uh, and uh, uh, left hand uh, inequalities. But uh, for open quantum system, they are using the, the master equation in order to define the quantum uh, speed limit time for open quantum systems. And it is given. Uh, uh, actually by this quantity, which is the max between these quantities, and uh, we can use it for open quantum systems. So uh, the, the most important one is that you can use it, the, the reduced density operator, uh, the derivative uh, uh, of, the, of your density operator, and you can calculate these norms using this, this definition, and uh, then you can calculate the quantum speed limit for any open quantum system. Oh. Okay, so thank you. Are there other questions? Yes. Well, then, mm -hmm. if not, let's thank Khadija again, and we thank proceed. You. We proceed to the.